One, two, one, two, you're now tuned in to the world famous Wake Up Show, man. You know, KMP in the building with me, my man DJ Revolution in the building with me. We normally don't have, you know, superstar boxers in the building, man. This is usually a freestyle hip-hop battle environment. But my man Ali called and was like, yo, we got the next legend in, in, in L.A. We got to do something with him, like, right now. Brilliant. So... Amir King Khan, what's happening, man? How you doing, man? Everything's cool, man. I'm here in LA training for my next fight. Um, and you fighting, it's a pretty big fight. Yeah, it's a big fight for me, you know, fighting Zab Judo on the 23rd of July in, in Las Vegas. So it's a big one for me, yeah. You know, my partner Sway is a big uh, fight fan. Now, I got $1,000 on you. Yeah, man. He got $1,000 on Zab Judah, man. Who, who's got a safer bet, man? Man, you, you got a safe bet there. You know, <laughs> I can I can 100% say I'm going to win the fight. I mean, it's a unification fight. I've got the WBA world title, and Zab Judah has the IBF world title. But, I mean, he's not going to take that away from me. I mean, I've got the hunger, I've got the youth, got the, got the experience, and they've got the power to take him out. I mean, it's going to be a tough fight, don't get me wrong, but right. it's going to be... It's going to be very, very explosive, and we know what to do, how to, and we know how to beat Zab Judah. Now, let me ask you a question, man. I don't get to interview a lot of boxers. I want to know, at what point in your life did you feel like getting your head bashed in was a career move? <laughs> <laughs> like, was it in, like, the eighth grade somebody stole a candy bar, and you were like, yo, pow, man, you know, I got this. With boxing, I think, you know, when I started, I was at the age of eight. And I went to the gym because I'm very hyperactive. I was always naughty at school, naughty at home. So my dad took me there just to burn the energy. Right. So, you know, give me a bit of discipline. I mean, I loved it. I kept, you know, I kept saying to my dad, look, dad, I want to go to the gym. Take me to the gym. And he was like, oh, once a week's enough. But I wanted to go more and more. Right. Since then, you know, I've kept it up. And boxing just, you know, made me behave in school. And um, I just never looked back. I mean, I kept to it. And I was 11 when I had my first fight. Right. And I won that. And I just loved it. After that, I mean, I never looked back. Now, you turned pro 2005 or six, correct? I ch turned pro 2006. I went to the Olympics 2004, won the silver medal. Okay. Uh, the guy who beat me in the finals, I fought him again. Nine months later, beat him and then turned pro uh, in 2006. Yeah. Now, in your pro career, you've only had one loss, is that correct? That's right, yeah. Now, usually, man, you know, when you have a loss, it's, I know it's devastating, but do you yeah. feel like that loss actually helped you in your career? Or do you feel like you still feel devastated and you no. want to... Revenge. Yeah, definitely. You know, you want revenge. But I think it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I think if that didn't happen, if I didn't get beat, then I don't think I'd be in this position now. Uh, it made me just more hungry and made me go in the gym and, you know, think through what I need to do and what mistakes I made and never to make the mistakes again. And since then, I've never looked back. I mean, you know, one day that fight will happen again and I, and I will get the revenge back. But look where I am and look where he is. The guy who beat me, I mean, he's just uh, still at that normal domestic class and right. I'm at world level now fighting pound for pound titles. Now, why do you think you um you lost that fight, man? Just if you look think, if you look back at it, because every time they show your highlights, <laughs> there's always like, man, he's the, gonna be one of the greatest. But there was that one night, yeah, yeah. and then they show you stumbling. I'm like, yeah. man. Yeah, you know, I think um it, it could have been anything really. You know, it could have been all the distractions. I, I used to train in England at first. And I mean, in England, I can't even walk the streets. I mean, everywhere you go, people know who I'm your Khan is even non-boxing fans know who I am. I mean, I think I got caught up in that. I mean, people started calling me the, the, a superstar already before I even won a world title. Right. I think I got caught up in all that stuff. And then when that loss happened, I mean, I just totally packed everything up in England. I moved to LA with Freddie Roach, my trainer, sparred with Manny Pacquiao, uh, and I had to build my respect up again. And I did it at the wildcard gym. And since then, you know, it's only made me a better fighter. I think, like I said before, you know, the, the defeat did me a world of good. If, I, if that didn't happen, I don't think I'd be sat here now as a world champion and right. top 10 in the pound for pound rankings. Right, right. Now, how does it feel to spar with Manny Pacquiao, man? I mean, we, it's good when me and Manny Pacquiao spar, but the whole gym stops and right. uh, everyone's phone cameras are out and everything because right. Manny's got a very similar style. You know, I've got a very similar style to him right. uh, where we in and out fighters, we, we both quick, explosive. Right. Um, but we we do enjoy sparring with each other. We help right. each other, and for me, it's great confidence to share the ring with someone like Manny Pacquiao. He's a pound for pound best fighter in the world. Right. And to do, even do well against someone like him is just a great confidence. Now, now there's never there can never be a fight between you and Manny because no. you guys have the same trainer. Trainer. Yeah. But what, what if Manny did like some Jedi mind trick on you, right? <laughs> and he was like, "Look, I'm not gonna fight Floyd, or Floyd's not gonna fight me, but I need you to take out Mayweather." Yeah, definitely. I think that could happen. That fight, uh, I was speaking to Freddie Roach and Freddie said, um, you know, before Manny Pacquiao fights Mayweather, uh, you'd fight him. I think that just shows that Manny Pacquiao-Mayweather fight will never ever happen. 
I mean, wow. that fight would have if that fight would happen, it'd be the biggest fight in history. It'd be huge. Um, but I think uh, too much politics and that fight will happen. But I think 2012, I'll be ready for Mayweather. It'll be a huge fight for me. At the same time, you know, I'm getting more experience. I'm getting better and better at what I'm doing. Right. Uh, getting stronger, growing into a man. I'll be 25 next year, and I think it'll be perfect for me to face someone like Floyd Mayweather. You have to remember Floyd now, you know, hit his peak. And uh, I think he, we need a young champion now to come up and take him out. Now, what do you think about the fight that Floyd's chosen on the, on the next yeah. fight is, is uh, Victor Ortiz. Ortiz? Yeah. Now, you beat Ortiz before? No. Yeah, I, I, I boxed Ortiz in the Junior Olympics in uh, Louisiana. Okay. 2003, and I stopped him in the second round. But he's better now than he was back then, right? Yeah, he, you he know, I mean, well, remember when um, I walked into a championship and people saying, what weight are you? And I said, 132 pounds. And like, oh, no, you're going to get knocked out. I said, I said, Who, who's in my division? And they said, a guy called Victor Ortiz has not been beaten for like two years. No one's going to touch him. Right. I went in there and I took him out in two rounds. Right. Uh, I, th I think uh, I think that, that defeat against, against me, he had done him a world of good. Look right. where he is now. I mean, right. now he's come on so much. Uh, he also got beat off Maidana, the guy who I fought two fights ago and beat. But, you know, Victor's a great guy. He's, a, he's We're good friends. We speak together. We sp speak on the phone a lot. Uh, and I really wish him all the best against Floyd Mayweather. Even though, you know, I think Floyd maybe have more experience against him and might right. be the quicker and more, you know, explosive fighter. But I still think, you know, uh, he can do a good job. You know what I think too, man, in boxing, um, some people are like a little upset that the best fighters don't fight each other. And they, they say that's the reason that UFC is coming on so strong because yeah. people are tired of waiting for like you to fight somebody that's your level yeah you know, what you know I mean? what's happened with with us is um i'm in the 140 pound division now um i fought maidana and uh, alexander fought against timothy bradley right. now the winner of us two would have faced each other now i offered the fight i won the maidana fight bradley won the uh other fight and it should have been me and bradley uh taking the fight on he chicken now he didn't want to take the fight on i mean he's a world champion he's ranked number one i'm ranked number two it would have right. been a great fight and I know I've got the I've got all the tactics to beat that guy, right. and uh, we, we we passed the contract over. I gave him the best deal. I even gave him fifty percent of the UK revenue, which right. is unheard of, and he didn't take the fight. Now that shows to me, you know, he, he's scared. That's the reason I'm fighting Zab Judah. I turned the page over. It, Zab Judah was there, and a lot of people are avoiding Zab Judah because he's very experienced and very tricky. Right. He's so far as well. An easier fight would have been Bradley. Mm. Uh, on paper but we're taking Zab Judah on it's going to be a little bit tougher but we know what to do and we know how to beat him so I'm one of them guys just like Victor and other fighters out there we, us young fighters we are coming up and we want to fight the best right. but it's just you can only do so much when you, you know, when you say you want to fight some people like Bradley and they don't take the fight then what could you do you just, you're just stuck now let me ask you a question I ask a lot of MCs this I mean you're on the world famous wake up show this is like historical hip hop radio yeah. show you know, I always ask, like, who the top five favorite MCs are. Yeah. In your opinion, man, who's the top five fighters of all time since you're, like, you know, the next legend about to be? Um, I think who's, you, who's your number one of all time? Number one of all time is Muhammad Ali. I think you all should agree on that because Muhammad Ali, what he did for boxing, I mean, took it to a different level. Right. Um, and then you've got um, huge names like Mike Tyson. Right. In, his, in his prime, I think he was untouchable. Yeah. You um, think Ali would have beat Tyson in his, that, if they yeah. fought each other in the Ali prime? would have beaten him because Mike Tyson had a come forward style, quite short he was for the heavyweight division. Ali would have stuck with the jab and kept hitting him with the jab and frustrated him and probably knocked him out in maybe round nine or ten if that fight ever did happen right you know in that time when Muhammad Ali was in the heavyweight division there were some big big names you know you had Fraser you had Foreman yeah. you had Peterson you had some big names but the thing is um, Ali went in there and took them all out right uh, and if Tyson was in them if that, if Tyson was in that mix as well I think he would have had some he would have had trouble to become a world champion around then right. but you know boxing changes I mean you got some great champions like Sugar Ray Lenz who I look up to as well I think right. he's another great fighter right and um, then a friend of mine Nassim Hamed from England he's Prince. A, he's a, yeah Prince Nassim Hamed yeah. he, he comes to my house we chill out we hang out what happened to that cat man he lost uh, like one fight and disappeared yeah. man what, what, what's the deal he was um, incredible Nas yeah Nassim Hamed was a very um you know, he, 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 was a, he used to showboat showman. and everything. Showman, and yeah. He was a huge showman more than anything. He had the fight against Barrera and got beat. And, um, and that, that, that just ruined him? him. Yeah, it disheartened him. I don't think... Yeah, he come back one more time. Um, Who did he fight after that? Calvo in, from and did Spain. He, did he beat him? He beat Calvo. I mean, it was a messy fight. He went the full distance. But right. I think uh, Naz probably thought, look, I don't need this. I mean, especially if you've got something like 50 million in your bank account. And right. you think, do I want to do this? And you're not, your heart's not in it. Right. Then I think he made the right choice. 
You know, you know what they said, man. I watched that fight, and they were saying that somebody finally figured out his style of just. Yeah. He had like the drunken boxer style or something. <laughs> like he was all over the place, like a kung fu movie. Yeah, he was. He was one of them very unorthodox fighters. He was so far. He was uh, very hard hitting. I mean, if he could hit Barrera with a clean shot, I think it would have knocked him out. But um, I think that's just styles. You know, people start working him out, saying this guy's a one punch artist. So if we can take that one punch away from him and right. box him and right. keep him busy, he can't do anything, and that's what happened. Where do you where do you uh, rank De La Hoya of all time? De La Hoya is uh, one of the greatest greatest fighters out there as well. I mean, he promotes me, and with Golden Boy Promotions, and we, me and De La Hoya get on quite well. So you can't say nothing negative about it. I cannot say nothing no, negative. Okay. So I mean, I had a few questions. I was like, damn, my, I don't want to mess up your money. My, dog, my yeah. last um, my last fight was in England, and he, he flew over there to to promote the fight. Me and me and Oscar get on quite well, and. Um, you know, in boxing, I think even even he was one of the greatest fighters out there. Probably made the most money, and I mean, did what he had to do. You know, another thing, man. Another you know, off the topic question too, man, is that um, the Mayweather camp continuously says that Pacquiao is on steroids, mm. and that's why they don't want to fight him, <clears throat> and that's why they want to do all these weird blood tests yeah. before the fight, middle of the fight, after the fight. Yeah. What happens when you do a blood test? Why is he ducking blood tests? Like, what does that do to a fighter? Does that mess your psyche up? You yeah, know? well, you know, I think with Manny, is, uh, he said, you know, maybe a day before a fight, like, taking blood out, um, it, it could really make you weak or whatever. I mean... How much you know, blood are we talking about, yeah, man? We're talking like, about a little amount, I know, but maybe he just thinks that. Um, but, you know, I think the Olympic testing is taking a pee test. And that's what I've been doing when I was in the Olympic Games. Right. And Manny's agreed to do the pee test, but, I mean... Floyd Mayweather wants to go that one step ahead maybe Floyd's using it as an advantage on his side knowing that Manny Pacquiao probably hates needles and stuff um, but you know end of the day um, I, I asked Manny the question I said why don't you do that and he, he says it straight up because I don't like needles and especially a day before my fight having one stuck in my arm and taking blood drawn out of me right. it's not really gonna I don't think it'll work for him but um, he said I'm happy to do the pee test I mean anytime even in between around he'll be happy to do that but I think I think it could be an, it could be Floyd maybe just mentally try breaking him down. You know, in the day Floyd really wants to fight. I mean, he'll say, "Look, come on, then we'll take the fight." Yeah. This is boxing. Manny Pacquiao has proven himself time after time, and he's he's been drug tested before fights and after fights, and he's been he's, he's come clear. Now I don't know what Floyd's problem is. Maybe he has that. Maybe he thinks he might. Uh, you know, Manny Pacquiao could beat him. He doesn't really want to lose that throne. But who knows? And what's like? What's the end of the line for you, man? Like, what would be your highest achievement? Where you like, you become Prince Nassim, and you're like, I'm out. Yeah, what, I what, think. What, 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 what would that? What would take? What would take for that to happen? Um, for me, you know, to 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 um, retire probably will be. I, I've always said I want to retire about 28 years old. What? Yeah, man. I you mean, just say you're turning 25. I, I'm turning 25 next year, and I've got some big fights ahead of me. And I've always said, you know, I want to be a. I want to be a young champion. I won the world title at 22. I went to Olympics at 17. So I did a lot of things early in my career, and. I want to probably um, you know, win them off a lot more world titles, move up the divisions, maybe hit light, light middleweight, uh, win a world title then, go for the pound for pound ranking and uh, face 28? some big names. I mean, 20, I know, you know, I could, um, financially I could um, sit back and relax and chill. But with boxing, I mean, you've got that, it's that addiction. You know, yeah, someone yeah, might yeah. knock on your door and say, oh, this new world champion's coming up and he's calling you out and I might be retired for like a year and then, so yeah. my knock on my door and say, yeah, we put 10 million on the table. Are you taking the fight? And I might say, oh, man, I still feel in good shape. I might take the fight. But who knows, you know, end of the day, I've, I've always said about 28 will be a good age for me to retire, look after my family, chill and finish in the top. How many weeks of training does it take to, if somebody knocks on your door at 32 yeah. and you're like, and they got 20 million on the table, <laughs> how many weeks do you need to get your body back to 25 at, at that age? Well, you know, our bodies, it, we got a lot of muscle memory. I mean, even now, when I when I start training camp, the first week's very, very hard. After the first week, you're back to normal. Mm. I mean, muscle memory kicks in. You know what you're doing and everything. Um, I think same again, even when you're 32, it'll take you at least 10 weeks to be in the best shape ever. Um, I spend about eight weeks in training camp, and, um, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm only 25. But I really think, you know, if I was 32 or something, 10 weeks, 12 weeks will do the mm -hmm. job. So, man, look, I told you, I got a thousand on you. Sway got a uh, thousand on Zab, man. My Sway's gonna lose, man. I'm telling you, he's gonna. You should bet a little bit more. Honestly, I'm gonna tell you, that's a 100% win for me. I'm I mean, AK, I need another G, bro, bro. <laughs> so make it two. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that's what I'm gonna do, man. But is there anything Zab does that you scared of, man? I mean, hook, 
jab, nah, you know, he's, body he's, shot. He's very awkward. He's very dirty. I think the only thing I have to well, worry he's about... he's very dirty. Yeah, the only thing I have to worry about is him low-blowing or uh, hitting me back of the head or in the kidney. Uh, when he fought Floyd Mayweather, I mean, Floyd totally frustrated him and he started doing dirty tactics and hitting below the belt and everything. Now, that's one thing about Zab Judah. He, he does get a little bit dirty and stuff, but I mean, we ready for whatever he brings to the table. I mean, I've, I've been training for 10 weeks for this fight and I'm going to be more than ready. He so if he head, head, head butts you in your nose, right? And you're like, man, my, my your ears yeah. are ringing. You keep going or they, they no, stop the fight? Or mean, what, what? If it was me, I'd keep on going. You know, I'll say to the doctor, look, I'm fine. I'm ready to fight. I mean, my, that's my job. I mean, getting headbutt in the face is just like being punched in the face. I think a lot of fighters look for excuses when they get headbutted. They just want the fight to be called off. I think I'll, I'll give you an example. When Devin Alexander fought against Bradley, it was a headbutt and he, he, he complained about the left eye, but it was the right eye he got butt on, uh, headbutted on. I mean, that's, what, that's how much adrenaline was pumping in his body. He just wanted to away out of the fight and he lost the fight on points. But... Um, you know, with me, once like once you're in the ring and you get headbutted or you get cut, you never feel it. With all that adrenaline in your body, you never feel anything. Even when you get knocked out, right? You don't feel anything. It's all that adrenaline. Maybe a day later, you might feel a little bit in pain. You might feel, oh, what happened to me? But hey, man, not. well, look, there's a recession going on. So two G's for KMP is a lot of money, K. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. I gotta borrow that, but nah. man, we need a win. Well, definitely, we're gonna have a win, and hopefully, we'll come back here and we'll we'll, we'll oh, share yeah, the yeah. win together, bro. All right, man. Hey, it's nice meeting you, man. Thank you for Thank coming you through the Waco Show. Shake your hand, brother. Thank All you right. very much. All right, man. Thanks for coming through. World famous Wake Up Show, Amir Khan. Sway, you gonna lose your money, man. Pull it back, Rev.